can you tell me what are the common challenges that companies face when they are trying to identify the foundation of their gtm strategy how can they overcome them like uh, i've seen that you have gone through multiple companies to where yeah. you are now so what have been your observations on that sure i think first companies have to come with a vision that it will take 6 to 9 months right it will at least take 6 months to figure out gtm because if you look at it in 3 months because companies want to want it figured out in 3 months not going to get it figured out in 3 months of course you'll not have enough data to speak for itself in 3 months there would be so many so i'll chart out some challenges right one of the challenge is how to figure out your sales cycle you can't figure out your sales cycle in 3 months because some companies so enterprises average out on 6 to 9 months okay your smbs might take some company might close in one month but your smbs on an average takes 3 months right mm. then so there would be certain like mid market which would be or 4 to 6 months kind of side so even to identify this sales cycle right you have to be in the process what happens is that if someone or a certain rep doesn't close in a certain time right they think that it's the reps issue and it's not the company it's not because there are so many nuances in the process right it's the buyer circle that is getting involved right there are so many conversations happening so i think what they should focus on is how are my next steps how are certain my deal criteria is defined right in the process when i'm figuring out my gt because at the end of the day my go to market is subjective to my revenue or the closures how many customers do i onboard at the end of the day at the same time how many conversations did i had let's say demos versus how many of them converted to opportunities that will also define in terms of how are we doing with respect to our product right are they even getting the value proposition out of it things like those so what happens is that sometimes when you look at the number at a surface level it's just numbers that oh we did 20 demos right we only had two saos it's the accounts executives problem no leaders should actually like when it's a small like early stage startup and you're doing zero to one you should actually be really involved and not push too much because you're a founder of course you will have that association with your own product but at the same time when you zoom out a little and you look at it uh, subjectively you will learn a lot from your demos itself you'll start listening to your customers more and more right another yeah. aspect of gtm is you can run a few pilots right let's say some customers can be your design partners okay mm. when you have design partners in place they can use your product right they can pay you or not pay you it's up, up to you how do you, ideally i never if not you know getting paid if you are providing a service you have your resources allocated right people are spending time beat any particular product or uh, your customer you should have some nominal if not expensive but they will give you a lot of data because right. these are the people who are using it on ground and it's a part of their day to day like for uh, sales people it might be their apollo or outreach right they can absolutely tell outreach where they're lacking uh, yeah. they can absolutely tell apollo what they want so i think mm. it, you should be talking to the people not the higher level because for high level people it's the reports it's the data but you should be talking to the people who are using it in their day to day right let's say you have an hr you are an hr tech company and if you deal in engagement or if you deal in rewards and recognition you should speak to hr vps you should, you have to figure out what problems they face so these are some of the challenges uh, that are mm-hmm. there because how do i position is the biggest challenge in gtm and mm-hmm. the position can only be figured out when you're actually talking to your customers or you're doing these sort of things in place you're talking to your sales team because they are up front and then right. on the high level you can create a messaging around it and test it out there there is ab testing always happening understood understood now before moving up uh, onto the target account list building i just have one thing to say if you guys have any questions do put it up in the comments below we'll take it towards the end of the session for sure so now moving on to the next segment building your target account list right what is the significance of a target account list in a Su- successful gtm strategy and how do you go about it yeah very important i think yeah. if you don't have a target account list uh, how would you even position yourself imagine you are the most relevant product for 200 to 500 uh, people company right and you are trying to sell to 5000 above so you'll fail right that's why having a target account list is very important how significant it is 
it all depends on how do you justify certain criteria let's say you'll start with size then you'll start with industry then you'll go with location then you'll go with pain points and then you'll go with your goals for that specific industry and also you have to align your goals because prioritization happens when you have your when you have your goals very specifically laid out that i want to onboard x customers right then i would have to see that in how much time okay i want to onboard x customers in let's say 3 months right mm. i would plan accordingly my target account list would be built accordingly right because mm. if i want to close let's say 10 customers in 3 months right i cannot go and chase enterprises Absolutely. at the same time if i'm more aware because i'll have certain customers right so you should have a lot of there you can go to g2 to identify yeah. personas right what do they care about right what are your personal goals uh, what are the usual challenges you can go to your customer and the one who's managing it so you can talk to them about it as well and then accordingly you can figure out that okay 200 to 500 makes the most sense so you are, you have identified the size then now you can identify what's my title what are the icp so there could be three ways three sort of icps that can be done one is that cxo right mm-hmm. one is like uh, minus 1 to cxo and then would be your uh, initiator and your evaluator could be there you can add one more let's say just to get the conversation there there have been times where i didn't hear from any of those and i just reached out to someone in certain other department you can build a rapport and then you can get an introduction because now you have oh priyanka asked me to connect with you she hmm. told me you're the relevant person things like those so then you can identify the title and then you can have Uh, your location defined with where i target asia pacific even in asia pacific i need to figure out what's my priority right i go india yeah. then i would go singapore then i would go to indonesia then i would go to other countries there so these three become my priority in terms of location or demographics particularly and then comes your pain points what do they care about right is it time is it efficiency is it revenue so you have to figure out because your messaging should be around that so ideally for target accounts my main goal is to reach out to my icps my target accounts can also be like do they have money to buy a product so i would have mm. to put just like revenue as well i can also put a filter like recently raised funding or maybe it's a series a series b company let's say i want to only chase startups because they understand technology so i would put filters like that because they will sales cycle would be lower because mm. they would understand the value proposition that i'm going to quote so that's why so that's how you go about account i think i'll just quickly show you even 